This is the last page of the 9.2 notes and really there's no examples to cover in this part. It's just a matter of defining the properties and some um, definitions, some theorems. So one theorem is the properties of infinite series. So if you have two infinite series and both of them are convergent and A, B, and C are real numbers, if um, the sum of the first series is A and the sum of the second series is B, then the following series converges to the indicated sums. So C constant times that will um, converge to the constant times the original sum without the C. If you're adding or subtracting the sum um, of two series, then you're basically adding or subtracting their sums. Um, the limit of the nth term of a convergent series theorem. So if a series converges, then the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth term will be zero, okay? And the nth term test for divergence theorem says that if the limit of a n does not equal zero, then the series diverges, okay? Now I want to make a note here. These theorems do not state that if the limit equals zero, then the series converges, okay? These are one-sided implications. So one side implies the other. It does not go the other way around, okay? If it did, it wouldn't say then. It would say if and only when, or if and only then, okay? But this doesn't say that, which means this statement doesn't go both ways, okay? If the limit is equal to zero, it does not mean that the limit converges. It literally just means it may or may not, okay? However, for this statement is different. If it doesn't equal zero, then you know automatically for sure that it diverges, okay? But if you take the limit and you get zero, all it means is that it could diverge or it could diverge still. It's still a question up in, in the air, okay? And depending on how you find convergence, and there's a whole bunch of methods that we'll learn in the rest of this chapter, um, we know one, the only one we know so far is to take the um, partial sums, which is, can sometimes be a headache, and if you can't manipulate them the way we have example three and example four, where terms cancel, um, then you really, those two, the, that method is not gonna be a good method for the rest of the problems. So of course, every section that we have after this section in chapter nine, is going to be about all those different methods, okay? But one thing you can do right off the bat for every single problem you see from here on out is take the limit of the nth term and if it equals then you automatically know that the series diverges and you don't have to apply any of those um, methods that we're gonna continue to go over, okay? Um, however, if you take the limit of the nth term and you get zero, then that's gonna tell you you do need to continue on with trying one of the methods that we learned from here on out. Okay, so this is a big, big thing here. We're gonna use it a lot. Um, so again, this is just stating what I said. If the limit equals zero, then the series may converge or it may not converge. However, if the limit does not equal zero of the nth term, then we know automatically that the series does diverge. Okay, which does come in handy because I would like to know right off the bat if some of these things diverge, there's no sense in applying any of these rules or theorems that we're going to learn if I didn't need to, okay, if this one took care of it for me, okay? So that's the end of 9.2, and we'll continue with 9.3 in another video.